So good afternoon. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Um, <laughs> nice, Ron. I'm glad you're doing well. Um, interesting day in the market today, that's for sure. Um, today we're talking about price action and well, you guys, uh, I, I honestly don't know what more I can really add <laughs> to the conversation of price action that I haven't done before. If you look at any of the body of work that I have done, uh, it's pretty much all based on price action. So I'm going to go with some very, you know, basic things, some very simple things. And I, I will preface this that it was the study of price action that turned my trading around. The study of how trends develop, uh, there be uptrends or downtrends and where the patterns um, would set up to give me the best probability of a winning trade. And I studied that like a maniac. I, I mean, seriously, I don't know how many tens of thousands of hours probably in deep study of price action. Um, it's who I am, it's what I do, it's what I'm passionate about in here. So do feel free to ask questions um, as I go along here. But um, because I've, boy, I've done this over and over and over. Um, one of the things to, to start off with is the, the formation of a trend. How does a trend begin? What does a trend look like? And remember, if a stock has been moving down, the only way a trend can begin is the first higher low. This right here is not a trend. That's an impulse wave. That's just we're trying to come back up and you can see lots and lots of impulse waves fail. Lots of them. Okay. In fact, in my study, about 50% of all impulse waves fail. It's the first higher low in an uptrend that begins that trend, begins that uptrend. Okay. And and as we get toward the end, end of the class, you, I'll let, bring up any chart and I'll show it to you over and over and over. Any chart you want to show me, I'll show it to you over and over and over. Uptrends are the same way. When a stock has been moving in an uptrend and then we break a support in that chart and rally back, it's always the lower high that creates the downtrend, where the downtrend begins. It's always the same. Now it can be double tops, double bottoms, things like that, that show up in charts. And you know, we have these other patterns, head and shoulders patterns, inverted head and shoulders patterns. The price action can, can be a pullback opportunity or it can be a a consolidation, what, we, what I call a pop out of the box. It doesn't really matter. The price action forms up and sets up the trend in the trend reversal. And once the trend has begun, any, any higher low has to be looked at as the opportunity for the next possible opportunity to short. And on the other side of that chart, any lower high, excuse me, higher low, sorry, higher low that holds in that trend has to be looked at as the next opportunity for an entry position into a trade. Now, as a swing trader, that's the only thing I really care about. Okay, And, and honestly, it doesn't matter what time frame you're in, it's always the same. The um, 
the price the price that I'm looking for if it's a pullback opportunity okay I want to enter that trade here where the risk is low and I want to exit that before I hit the top. I never know where the top is. I can tell you that I, I generally make more money by closing the trade before it turns around. Okay, um, particularly in options right now. How many of you guys have ever had the experience where you're in a nice winning trade, things are looking good, and then you're waiting for the first pull back that first black candle to show itself and by the time it shows itself half your profits are gone show of hands tell me that or even more of your profits are gone right so we need to be willing to take profits before the turn happens we know it's going to happen we just don't know when it's always going to happen Okay, so we have to be willing to take profits. Now, it's, you know, certainly you could take most of the profits, and if you have enough in the position to leave a small position to scale from there to try and catch the rest of it, great, no problem. But you should be taking those profits on a regular basis in here. You know, QQQ, pretty good example of that today seven straight days to the upside, six of those new record highs, and yet yesterday, on the sixth record high day, people just chased into the trade. Chased. Well, look what's happening today. For that, we buy at the low side of that position and we sell when it stretches up and we sell before the pullback occurs if we can, at least the largest part of it, so we don't lose a big portion of what we've made. So if those concepts make sense to you, I'm going to drop this um, screen here and I've set up a chart here can be and uh, it doesn't have to be this chart it can be any chart but what I did with KMB is I pulled this back and I wanted to demonstrate to you what I did to study price action okay because one of the things that frustrated the heck out of me is there were trends all around me anybody ever felt that way there's there's a trend here and and I'm not in it I've never been in it and here's another one in a trend and I'm not in it and I've never been in it and there's a trend here and a trend here and a trend here and I'm not in any of them so I started studying the formation of a price pattern by doing what I'm showing you here there's nothing fancy about this but it does require some work and effort and I want you to think about this um, when we teach ourselves, we often have to go through example or multiple examples, just like we would teach um, anyone else. If you're teaching your, your grandson, your, your granddaughter, your kids, um, anything about what we do, we go through multiple examples to illustrate that point. There's an old saying out there that you have to do something 10,000 times to become um, proficient in whatever it is that you're doing. Okay? And I took that to heart when I studied price action. I mean, I spent tons of time doing this. So I dragged the chart back in time. In TC2000, if you don't know how to do that, you just grab that little button right there, right there at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see on a white screen, but it's there. Drag that and drag the chart back. Drag it back to before the trend began. And then start analyzing the price action. And I always think it's a good idea. You're going to feel like a fool doing this, but it's a good idea to talk it out. Okay? Explain it. Explain it like you would be if you're trying to share this trade with someone else. Okay? Where does a trade begin? 
And looking at this chart, would everyone agree? If I were to draw this up right now, we have a trade or a stock here that's been basing. It's been bottoming in here. We're in a current downtrend. We're coming down toward this low area here in the chart. There's some support down in here. This is a bottoming formation. It's a pattern that's developing. And so we can see there is no long buy here. There may have been a short right in here, the lower high, okay, just like right there. All right. But what we want to do is we want to look, we're looking at this and watching for the next potential trade because this short is already in play. It's already moved. We don't want to chase. A move okay because the purpose of doing price analysis is to get us in the right vicinity of the trade in a close approximation of the time of the move and while I'm doing this guys I want you to understand I want you to think about this it doesn't matter if I'm looking at a weekly chart an hourly chart a five-minute chart or a really fast 333 tick chart that I trade in futures. It's always the same. Price action is always the same. So when we um, move this chart forward one step at a time, and, and in TC2000, if you don't know how to do that, you use the bracket keys right there by your, your P key. Uh, um, just wreck myself up there though <laughs> but your bracket keys back and forth and you can move a chart forward one period it doesn't matter if you're on a five minute chart it'll move it forward one five minute period if you're on a daily chart it moves it forward one day at a time if you're on a weekly okay it's going to move it forward one week at a time or backwards and you can go back and forth using the forward or backward brackets okay so in looking at this chart you can see this selling has come into play and it's come down and we've tested these lows and now we're getting a little bit of a price reaction back we're trying to bounce back up to see if this trend down is going to continue to hold okay if we keep watching this, we get pretty strong here in this move. Really strong rejection of that bottom, but I want you to notice we still have the possibility in here, this could be a lower high than here. Maybe we just change the trajectory of the trend to the downside. That's why this impulse wave is so dangerous to chase. because about half of them fail. We get that fear of missing out when we see this and we go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, now's my chance, I gotta hurry up and get into this. But then we end up trapping ourselves into a trade. And notice in here that your stop loss in here would have to be really big. The purpose, I think, the purpose of technical analysis is to get me into trades where I don't have to risk a lot of money for the entry. So what, did, what I said before is that upside trends always begin with the higher low. Even if we're in an overall downtrend here on a bigger pattern, the higher low where we hold right in here is the uptrend. Okay, Moving down, lower highs here. Right here, we made a higher low and the stock went up. Now, why is that the case? So many people are watching these charts that when we first get some kind of commitment of follow through here, well, people jump on and ride that trade up. 
And if you pay attention to how that is formed, if you notice right in here, this would be a pretty high risk trade. Try to catch an entry in here, your stop loss down here, pretty high risk. This one, pretty low risk. See how the price action got concise here? It's all sloppy over here. Here it got concise, it's focused. And you can see that on every chart and in every time frame. Okay, so let's move this forward a day at a time. You can see we hit that high point. We had that shooting star. Gosh, look at there, we're pulling back. Good thing we didn't chase here. We start to rest. A little consolidation in here. You guys see the possibility of a higher low could form. Right? So let's ask this question. If we like that, what if we set a price alert in here? On that chart and said, you know, if we cross above this area, I'd like to see it tighten up a little bit more, honestly, because the stop would be down here, kind of whipsawing in this pattern. But this just would give me an, uh, an, an easy alert into that trade if it starts to move in what I expect. And then, you know, one of the cool things about the technology today is we don't have to, we put that alert on. We can see the pattern potentially forming. I say potentially because we don't know. This could fail and go south. So we're not predicting anything. What we want to do is we want to see a pattern that develops correctly and follows through like we expect it to do, not predicting anything. If it doesn't follow through, don't care. I'm not in the trade. Okay, No ego in this whatsoever. All right. So if I move this forward, how many of you make the decision I'm going to get in the trade. That's going to be different for everyone because you're going to have to decide if my entry is here and I believe my stop loss is here. Is that an acceptable risk for you in a trade? And we have to take into account this resistance up here and saying, is there enough upside move in there to make that an acceptable trade? But you can see how the pattern develops if you study that pattern. And notice what happens as a result. Okay, And this is just one example. In any trade beyond that point, as this zooms up, when we get a pullback and we hold, we can look for an opportunity here to place another price alert and see if that trade is going to perform. Now, I don't know if it will. I have no clue if this is going to perform. I see a nice little hold of a support area. I can tell you this would not likely be a 3-8 trap. I'm not looking at the 3 and the 8 on here because it pulled back too hard. Okay, so we've lost a little bit of momentum in here on that upside move. We just went too far too fast, honestly. So follow that through and talk this out. Are you in this trade here? If you're in this trade, where's your stop loss? Stop loss down here. Let's see how this works and follow that through. Okay. Our trend that was here has now shifted to here. So what we want to follow on up, if this is going to continue on up, is this new trend trajectory. Okay, And you can just repeat this process over and over and over. It doesn't require any predicting whatsoever. It does require us to look at the chart. And unfortunately, so many people have been caught into the trap of only looking for the big white candle. 
not looking at the pattern that's forming that's going to give them the high probability entry. They just want to chase the move that's already underway. We want to try to avoid that because when we chase, well, we can get results like what the QQQ traders are getting today. When we chase that move, the upside, we can get hurt. Like I mentioned here, we chase this up, we could have been stopped out easily in that pullback. Okay. So look for the setup that is coming in the trade. Look for that price action move and you'll find that you'll get into better trades. And you can study this by just taking any chart and talking it out. And guys, do. Place those the areas and say, okay, this is where I'd be in. This is where my stop would be. I think that's an okay trade. I think my probabilities are good here or they're not good here. And then play that through and see. And trust me on this. When you become a trend follower, stop predicting charts and start looking for bullish patterns that set up in high probability trades within a trend, within a trend, technically correct trend, higher highs, okay, followed by higher lows. That's the only way a trend to the upside works, okay? If we make a lower low, the, the upside trend is broken. And then we have to wait for that process to begin again, the resumption of a trend. Okay, does that make sense? So when I push this on out, you can see that pattern gets all yucky here. Here's an example right here. We pulled back. We held right in here on this trend. This trade failed. It made a lower high. So there is no long trade in here until we can resume the upside trend. It looks like what happened in here. This was an earnings report. Big gap up on earnings. So we can find this pattern in every chart, in every trade. Now, I got some, somebody came in the room the other day and gave me these big kudos for, said that I called the trade in Tesla. And I don't, I don't term it as that. Um, but here's my, here's my uh, drawings on Tesla. And right here is where I told people to be watching for an entry into the trade. We're right along the trend. This was a really long consolidation after a big gapping move, lots of rest. There's our higher low that occurred, a nice resting consolidation with a stop loss that was relatively close in the terms of Tesla, there's your potential trade. I did the same thing just a couple days ago in Amgen. Okay, we broke the downtrend. There's the downtrend. We broke the downtrend from a W formation, pushed up, pulled back, held support, this candle showed up and I said, there's an entry for Amgen. And then you have the follow through that we see today, for the last two days to the upside. Higher probability trades by waiting and looking at the pattern, not chasing the white candle. If you can, find these patterns as they're developing and set price alerts in there. Let that alert trigger. You've got a trade. If anyone has been watching the morning prep videos, I talked about CRM over and over and over. Here's the pattern. We'd already made a higher low in here, but we were stuck against this resistance in this nice tight consolidation. Type of why, if you guys heard me talk about this multiple times, 
stop would have to be underneath here and there's the trade and we went up and filled the gap as I suggested we might do Start. okay now I um, actually put together a potential trade here today on Nvidia and I know this is almost going to be sacrilege to people right now that somebody is thinking Nvidia is now short so I put together a trade to take advantage of this potential lower high that's being occurred. How does a downtrend begin, y'all? A downtrend begins with the first lower high. Now I'm not saying Nvidia is going to crash. But if I can put on a trade and Nvidia just has to pull back into here, I can make plenty of money on that pullback. That move. Just the same way I look for the higher lows over here for the entry trades. And I like this one right here the best because we crossed over a support. We held and notice how it came in right on the trend. Right on the trend. Now, I talk about this a lot, and, and it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter what chart time frame you look at. If I were to take this and go to a very quick five minute chart, the NVIDIA short trade started with a lower high failure. We broke support, we rallied back, and that's where it failed. Okay. It's, it's always the same. And this will not turn into an upside trend until this can actually put in a higher low that breaks some resistance. So we break out of this little move here, put in a higher low, and then we can start resuming a five minute upside trend. Right. Okay. That makes sense. If you look at long term charts, it's exactly the same. If you look at my futures trading chart, I use the 3A trap strategy and it's always the same. When downtrends begin, we always have that failure. Okay, so this morning we get this big pop up there right there is the lower high failure there's your short okay when we start moving to the upside this is a 333 tick chart by the way a very very fast intraday chart in futures we hold higher lows and there's your winning trade. Okay. So it doesn't matter what time frame you trade, and you don't even have to be all that special of a trader to be able to identify this. Now, what we're seeing right here, when we see charts that cannot hold a higher low or hold a lower low in a chart, so we cross up here and we can't hold, fail. Cross up, can't hold, fail. Cross up, can't hold, fail. Cross up, can't hold, fail. This is chop, stay out of this. There's no trade to be had in here without massive risk. But we know what a winning trade looks like, right? We can have all of this choppiness in here and still be developing some kind of an upside trend. But this has to move up and prove to hold. Then, then we have a trade.
that has a high probability of winning. And honestly, guys, the, the difference in the stats on this is truly remarkable to me because, and I can't make this up, when I show you these patterns, the crossovers like this will fail about 50% of the time. Here in choppy areas, the percentage goes way up. But about 50%, that impulse wave back up fails. By waiting for that resting pullback that holds, I increase my odds from 50-50, 70-30. Instead of half of my trades winning, 70% of my trades win. Okay, just by being patient and waiting for that pattern to set up. Okay, so I mentioned to you guys that you could give me any chart. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. You give me a chart and you give me a time frame and I'll show you that the same pattern exists. I, 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 it, it's on every chart. It will always be on every chart. And if we learn to look at the chart with a little bit more of that um, willingness to see what's actually there, rather than the rush to predict or the, the desire to chase, we can do a much, much better job, even in very complicated markets like we've seen here, um, recently, uh, the patterns are still there. No one is bringing up a chart. Let's take a look at Snap. Snap in here. This was a gap in here, so it's not fair. I wouldn't, I wouldn't claim this, but this was a higher low. A Garmin. On Garmin, if you're looking right now in this trade. This is the crossover up. So we're breaking out in here, crossing up. So now make that hold out here. Make that hold that higher low and look for the entry. Okay, this right now is just trying to come back up out of that bottom. Okay, CLF. There's your higher low. You're breaking the downtrend. This is the potentially the beginning of an upside trend. Okay. IBM. Well, if you've been watching my morning prep videos, there was my price alert on IBM. It hasn't quite made it to the trend, so it might still be early. But there's the price alert following this higher low, this higher low, and now this potential. And if this breaks through here, you see we have that potential to fill the gap. This one alerted today. Same pattern that repeats over and over and over. Parts. Now, I will tell you, I don't normally favor um, trades that are below the big downtrend. If we've got uh, if we've got a sell off that's like really huge, you know, underneath a downtrend like this, then maybe I will take that upside trend inside that big downtrend. Take um, like a Starbucks, for example, this big, strong sell off here. The big downtrend is up here. Okay, if this were to come in here and put in a higher low, then I might trade this up into here. But I would much prefer this downtrend break before I get too involved in that trade. This is where I start start taking small positions and things like that. Right. HBI on a weekly. Um, Brad brought this one to the RWO room, and um, I'm waiting on this trade now too. 
HBI, you can see on a weekly chart, this could be coming up. If this comes up here and pops and breaks through this resistance up here, we've got a potential really nice longer term hold. Right. And I make quite a bit of money from those kind of things, longer term trades um, that I can hold for a period of time. So nice potential here setting up. And this is just a continuation. You'll notice in here the complication that occurred, right? Because we rallied up and then we broke this support. There's a lower high. The potential that that could fail is there. Your complication. But we were unable to make a lower low, at least yet. We haven't made a lower low. So if this pops in here, my trade could only be Oh, high probability if it does pop in here only up to here so maybe you nibble into that weekly trade until this breaks and then holds up here and then you load up on the position okay it's a similar trade that I've done over and over and over in longer term charts Shell, shell, there you go, beautiful. Potential high or low, holding in here around some support. Now just be patient. Because you can see we've kind of slipped this current upside trend. Whoops, I didn't mean to drag it away. We've kind of slipped past it. So we don't know where that could kick off. Now we have to wait. So how do you do that? You place a price alert. I don't have to be all concerned about this. By the way, let me show you this, guys. If you take a trend line, if you don't know how to do this, you take a trend line, draw it on a chart. It's really hard to get a line straight. You draw it on a chart. If you take your mouse, hover over one end, okay, hold down your shift key and then click your left mouse button, it makes it perfect, it snaps it flat. So now I can take this, and I always do my alerts in pink, throw it up here, okay? That's where I want to be alerted on the trade, and then just set the alert. That's it. I don't have to do anything more. I don't have to predict this. I don't have to watch this. I don't have to get all worried about it. I don't have to be jumping around here. Uh, no. Show me that you have enough strength to pop through there because I can get my stop loss down in here. If you've got that potential to do it, then I want to know that. Whether it be for an up move or a down move. You can do the same thing over and over and over. Nice chart, Keith. Very nice chart. Okay. Is this making sense, guys? You know, this year, I'm on pace to do $120,000, $130,000 this year trading this chart. One chart. This is the Dow Jones E-mini futures. I don't trade it that much. Okay? I'm not watching this all the time. It's only when I'm not on the mic, I have time to watch it. Now think about that. I don't do anything other than what I just explained. But I can do this with high effectiveness because I'm not predicting anything. Just following the price action of the chart and truly following the price action of the chart. I'm not following an individual candle. I'm not following what I want the chart to do. What I want the chart to do doesn't matter. What matters is what the chart is doing. Okay, can you guys see the possibility here? That just created the lower high, and there's your short entry into the trade.
There's the trend break and we broke that support. Okay, that's what I do. And you do it over and over and over. You don't even have to be that special in uh, scanning or technical analysis. If you become good at following the trend, following those price action moves in this chart here on shell break of that right there there's the higher low there's the winning trade from there on every test of that created the next opportunity to the upside it repeats whether it be up or down we fail we break support we make a lower high that begins the downtrend and every failure along there is the opportunity to short And it doesn't matter how far back in a chart you go. It doesn't matter what time frame you look at. It's always the same. Any questions on that, guys? CRM? Sometimes, Pete, it all depends on the quality of the pattern. Um, the reason I, I really liked the CRM setup, even though it was below the 50, is notice how concise this price action was. See, when I look at price action, I look at it this way. I can see where the sellers are. Get that stupid thing changed. It changed colors on me. I can see where the sellers are, right? And I can also see where the buyers are. And if they're in a tight proximity like that, with an upside move potential, that's something I'm looking for. Because the more concise that price action is right there, the less risk I have to take to enter the trade. I could be wrong on this, it doesn't matter, because it's not gonna cost me much to be in that. Okay? I want to see those nice little price action patterns come together like we saw in Tesla. Okay, There's that tight consistency coming out here to trend. Just place an alert. And, you know, we get, we get all worked up here because if you bought that candle, okay, perfectly acceptable to buy that candle. All right? and then it pulls back, that's why the stop loss has to be down here. That's where the price action support is, and we have to wait for that trade. So if you jumped in early, no problem here as long as you bought a trade that had a long enough time on it. And even a 45-day option would have paid off here. That's why you need a good support underneath and a good price action that shows us where the buyers are. Now you can see when we pulled back here, this price range between here and here tightened up. And that's very common on a big popping move in a chart. We'll have a little bit of volatility that shows up. And then notice how this price action tightened up here. It's the price pattern that's more important than the candle. The candle's the result of the price pattern. Okay. So when you get those initial reaction moves in a trade, don't fret about it, don't chase them. Wait, because you may get a lower risk entry. Be patient. Set your alert. Trade. Um, does the open and close? It can sometimes, Jerry. Um, but one of the things you kind of have to go back to, Jerry, is you got to ask yourself what what's my intention here. What kind of a trader am I? If I'm a daily swing trader, 
the open and close of the previous day probably doesn't matter unless it breaks through here okay so what kind of a trader are you are you trying to incorporate quick intraday trading with swing trading what are you trying to do here what I'm trying to show you is that with a high confidence if you let the chart develop you can make trades with a high percentage win see and that's more important to me and you know to me it's not even about being right I don't care I don't care if I see a chart and the chart doesn't work it fails I don't I really don't care because I don't have any emotion in it I don't have my ego in it it's only when they perform do I care and I make those entries into trades whether they be intraday whether they be whether they be longer term okay and just let the pattern develop for the trade Uh, Pete, the volatility stop. Yeah, I have it here on this chart. The volatility stop is meant to help people see where their stop loss should be. At least the way I set it up, that was the purpose and the purpose of the classes that I did on it. It's when people struggle to see where their stop loss should be. So as I mentioned in here on this chart, if you entered this trade on this candle, your stop loss needed to be underneath that low right there. See that? And then you had to be able to hold this through this pattern because nothing changed in this little consolidation. Nothing changed. It just improved. So it's to help you see the trade. I can also tell you that you'll get a little bit improvement in odds of a winning trade if you find that bullish pattern in a trade and it happens to be underneath the red you know underneath the resistance of that if you avoid that trade because you know we all get into this situation we see a chart and we think well this is my this has got to move because i saw it but if we just say Look, the, it's telling me there's a resistance up here. Let's respect that and let's just go find a different chart that doesn't show me that pattern. You'll get a little tiny improvement in odds of winning if you avoid trading those that are underneath that price resistance. Okay. But sometimes you'll find them and they'll work out just fine. But um, just just that little tiny improvement in win-loss ratio or odds if you're patient and wait for the trade. I can say the same thing is true for the short. When you find those short pattern trades that lower high, you want it to be underneath that red volatility stop price should be underneath that red volatility stop so you can look right in here and even though this is showing your stop loss needs to be up here and it might be because of the volatility you can see what it's doing is it's indicating right there there's the resistance that's what it's showing you okay but when you look at the price action in here, you can see where the sellers are. So I would have probably had my stop loss a little bit tighter on this one. So study the price action. Price action is more important than any indicator. And then all you need to do on this one, set a price alert, have that stock fall into your short trade. Don't predict it. Just make it fall into your short trade. And you can repeat it right there. In. as long as that downtrend continues follow that downtrend down and until that downtrend breaks and puts in the higher low there is no upside trade there's the first higher low the beginning of the upside trend
okay and and you know guys it, it's no magic okay in doing this you can see this upside trend popped here and then it failed we resume the downside trend when we created the lower high so like i said with loss ratio about 70 30. okay you improve your odds of a win by following the price action not predicting it and just make the trade come to you so guys I've, I've got time for maybe one quick question but then rick's gonna be on um i hope you got something out of this um and if you want to study more of this i've got a ton of this stuff content on youtube um and of course we talk about this in right way options a lot um ask me on any chart and i can give you that look of a trade and um and help you you know lay out a potential trade but I, I want you to understand the simplicity of price action if we study price action you can use it on any time frame and anything that's chartable anything that's chartable if I can take what I show you here and turn it right over into a very fast 333 tick chart here and make money with it, you can trade this on any time frame. Okay. Uh, Ron, I don't know why I ended up here. It just seemed to fit me the best. Um, I tried, before I settled in, I tried lots of ch different charts. And I tried lots of different time frames. Okay. Um, and I just kind of settled in on this one. It just worked really well for me. And the reason I settled in on the Dow Jones E Mini futures is when the when the futures move, when the futures run, they usually really run. Okay, so you get these big price moves, and I don't have to be in there long. See those trades right in there? I don't have to be in that for a really long time. I can be in five, ten minute trades and make five, six hundred dollars, sometimes more depending on the trade so I don't have to be there a long time I just wait for the good quality trades and notice over here the reason I came over here is notice how concise this price action is it's concise it's smooth it's readable where this over here is just a freaking mess okay guys out of time Rick's got to come on um, you guys have a great afternoon. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, Larry, that's very kind. I truly appreciate it. Um, I hope the light came on for several people. Um, you guys have a great afternoon, and I wish you all the very best.